Hello you guys and welcome to Mr. and Mrs. Social Studies. My name is Sarah and in today's video we're going to be talking about specific strategies you can use Google Forms for in your classroom. This is part of a series we're doing here on the channel about different aspects of Google Drive and how you can use it to make your life easier and become a more effective educator. So far we've talked about Google Docs and Google Slides and in today's video we will cover Google Forms. I have three strategies or hacks for using Google Forms in your classroom. The first option is to get some quick feedback or put together a survey. Sometimes we do different things in our classroom and we don't really know what the students actual thoughts are about it. I find that sometimes we might think students feel a certain way but they actually feel more differently whether that's positive or negative negative. and this can be a great chance for us to improve our teaching because even though there's a lot of different people within education and different requirements we're trying to meet it is important what our students think I believe and getting their feedback helps me make future decisions so for example as this year I've been piloting the grid method for my Spanish instruction since I teach half social studies half Spanish I've been asking for feedback a couple times throughout the year about certain things and how it's working or how it's not working. And that's just a way to be able to keep making us better educators and making sure we're meeting our students' needs. It's super easy. How I'll set it up is usually put whatever questions I want there. I will have it collect the students' email addresses just so I know who the feedback is coming from. For instance, if there was a student who left you know, some pretty unhelpful or very negative review, but then I also see that it's a student who doesn't try in the class or does not choose to apply themselves or take any of it seriously. I'm not gonna necessarily value their opinion as much as the other students who want to be there and who put the effort in and genuinely want to improve. So that also helps me. And I will usually offer a little bit of an incentive for students. So I will often throw in a couple extra credit points if they create the survey, just because that feedback is so helpful to me and I, I want to incentivize students doing it. However, I have just done surveys without offering extra credit and students are still very helpful. I recently did a pen pal survey to see if students were interested in pen pals and I had over 50 of my students respond, even though there was no incentive on that one. My second and favorite use of Google Forms is with formative assessment, especially making it self-grading. As you know, life is very busy as a teacher and ideally we want to be using formative assessment very often to just make sure our students are understanding things and using them as practice. But there's only one of you and there's a lot of great ideal types of formative assessment that would honestly take a lot of time to grade. For instance, the exit slip is a commonly used or at least commonly discussed practice and I think there is positive to that. But if we're being real for a second, do I actually want to like collect an exit slip multiple times a week for all 130 of my students and then grade them and look through them? That is time consuming and unfortunately there's not always time for that. So I love using Google Forms as a quick formative assessment. I have a lot of these for Spanish that the kids can take. I don't actually have to, you know, do anything after I've created it besides see how they're doing, check in using the data of those different activities, and it can be a really great way for students to practice certain concepts. Specifically, I use a lot of them for Spanish, like I said, just self-graded practice activities that then they can immediately get their feedback about whether it's right or wrong, and it does not require me to lead that. This is an amazing way to automate parts of your classroom while still making sure students are kind of using that form of assessment to help them. That immediate feedback is so helpful too because if I'm grading something, chances are I'm not always giving it back right away. I just don't grade that much that quickly. And even if I do, getting the papers passed back is sometimes a slower process as well. Finally, the other use of Google Classroom can be for more formal assessments, such as an end of the unit test. Jake's done this a lot more in his classroom. I have talked about on the channel how I prefer using Socrative, which I will link my Socrative tutorial video below. I find it's got more features, but using Google Forms is how Jake has chosen to test. And again, there are the self-grading options for a lot of things, as well as um, you can shuffle questions, but keep them within the same section. You can then delay when you want the results to be passed back. So students can submit it, but then they won't actually see their results and answers to questions till later on. There's definitely some different ways you can go about it, but 
if that is something you're interested in. If you are looking to try to digitize your assessments, that could be a valid option. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope these tips are helpful. Next time we're going to be talking about Google Drawings. Bye.